we'll jump right into it then. So today's class, we're going to talk about uh, receiving correction. Receiving correction and removing pride. All right? Receiving correction and removing pride. Oh, no. Oh, I thought there was a hand, but that's not a hand. That's somebody coming in. All right. All praise. So let's uh, start Romans 15, 4 real quick. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So just as the scripture said, a lot of, a lot of teachers start with this precept because it is definitely, definitely relevant for us today. The scriptures are here to teach us, to give us comfort, and to also to correct us, all right? That's the only thing that that's that that is why we have the Bible, because if without without the scriptures, without us learning from the past, we're going to continue to repeat the mess ups that we've been doing all our life. So the scriptures are here to provide us comfort and correction. Read that verse again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So it's for us to learn. Go ahead. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope so that we'll have hope. Hope of what? Getting the kingdom. Sure. That's what everybody coming to the truth for. That's what everybody want to do. Even even some people out there in Christianity, they think that's what they're doing, but they're just ignorant to the fact that they got to keep the commandments. But they go to church because they want to go to heaven. I've never asked anybody if they want to go to the kingdom of heaven and they say no. Never asked. Nobody's ever said, no, I don't want to do that. Now, the actions may show different, but they've never said it. So the scriptures is here to provide us with comfort that we might have hope in getting the kingdom, all right, and for us to learn. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. He said all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So whenever our people be acting like, you know, they be like, who wrote the Bible? It was given by God anyway. Black men wrote the Bible. Good grief. But it was given by God for them to write it down so that we would have it today. Read that again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine. Go ahead. For reproof. For reproof. Go ahead. For correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. So the scriptures are to reprove us and correct us and to give us instruction on how to be righteous. Go ahead. That that the men of God may be perfect. That we may do what? That the men of God may be perfect. That the men of God may be perfect. Go ahead. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto the good works of keeping the commandments of the Lord and the faith in Christ. All right. So now, now that we got that, so it says for reproof or correction. Uh, we'll... Matter of fact, let's go to correction. I know I told y'all to pull that in up there. Correction. Yeah, I already messed it up. My bad. All right. Let's put that on the screen. Let's read that. Correction. The action or process of correcting something. Mm -hmm. I check the typing for errors and send it back for correction. So it's the process. It is the action or process of correcting Something. What are the similar words down here? Rectifying. Uh, you can skip around. You ain't got to read all of them. A rectification. Writing. Putting right. Setting right. Putting to rights. Amend. Modification. I like, I like, I like modifying. Improvement. Or improving. Or repair. Or repair or whatever. Look, I said repair right the first time. And then I come back and say repair like I said it wrong the first time. Unbelievable. So there you go. Correction. All right. So. So uh, reparation, so that's, that's, that's what the word correction means. And that is what we all are coming, that's what we all came into the truth to do, to be corrected. We all want to be right with the Lord. So therefore, you didn't walk in the door already knowing what the heck to do. All of, most of us were still going to church on Sunday when we walked in the door. Most of us just left out of Sunday worship to come keep the Sabbath for the first time whenever we walked in the doors here. So we was coming to be corrected so that we may be right with the Lord. But a lot of times after we've been in for a little while, we forget that we still ain't perfect yet. 
we are striving to be perfect. The scriptures are still here to correct us. And there's people around us that are put in place to correct us also. And then we don't want to take that correction because I guess we know it all already. That's what, that's what we be doing. All right, go to, where we at? Uh, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 15. No, matter of fact, Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 23. Let's do that first. Proverbs 6, 23. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, mm -hmm. and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. The reproof of instruction are the ways of life. Of life. Which life? Let's go to Matthew 19, 16. Let's read that real quick, and we're going to read that again. It's for the ones that, that don't, that are new or newer in the truth. Go ahead, let's read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So they asked Christ, Good master, how do we get eternal life? Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So Christ said the only reason why he is who he is, the only reason why he can do what he do is because God made him that way. Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life. That same life we just read about in Proverbs, the same eternal life. Go ahead. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. That is how we get to life. That is the comfort. That is why we all walk in the doors because we want to get the kingdom. That's but when we right. come into the truth, we got to learn how to take correction. We must learn how to take correction. It's the only way, because whenever the scriptures say thou shall not covet, most of us was covered in the whole time. That's why we all bought all the new Jordans that came out, all the different stuff that come out. That's why you had fornication in the door, child, old place. Men and women wanted people that didn't belong to them. All of us was in the midst of coveting. So we had to be corrected on what that meant to not do it no more. All right, let's go back. Read that Proverbs 6.23 again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Uh -huh. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. So the commandments is the lamp, and the law is light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That is the only way we're going to get the kingdom is if we are able to be corrected. If we receive the correction. If we don't, you're going to be jacked up. And we're going to read some of those scriptures today. That if we don't, if we cannot fix and receive correction. We will mess ourselves up and mess around and lose out on the kingdom that's been already promised to us. All we got to do is follow what the Bible said. Go to Jeremiah uh, 3.15 or 15.3. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 3. And I, and I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. No, Those no, 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 no. F 3 and 15. Three I'm and 15. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I say either or, and I, you just pick one like you supposed to. Yes, sir. I'll pray. <laughs> My bad. Jeremiah, oh, yeah. <laughs> chapter 3, verse 15. Uh -huh. I will give you pastors according to mine heart, uh -huh. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's what, that's what the teachers and all the leaders have been set up to do, is to give our people knowledge and understanding of how to get to the kingdom of how to follow what God said. But a lot of times when we come in, we forget that we forget the whole purpose of why the leadership was set up. We forget the whole purpose. Why the Bible is here. We forget the whole purpose. Why we walked in the door all because of now we've gotten, we thinking we've gotten to that level of where you can't be corrected anymore. Where you perfect as you sit up in her when ain't none of us gotten to that level yet. We are supposed to be striving to get to that level. All right. Uh, so, like I stated before, we're going to talk about the matter of fact. No, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, 48, Matthew 5, 48 first. Yeah, Matthew 5, 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So we are commanded to be perfect. Like I said, the scriptures and the correction in the Bible is to make us perfect. So the only way for us to get to this level of what Christ is saying, we must be able to receive and accept correction. Go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So when we all walked in the door, we became new. New creatures. When we, when we acknowledged the fact we were messed up and was like, you know what? We've been doing this thing all wrong. Some of us was in all kinds of mess when we was out in the world. So once we acknowledged we was doing this all wrong and heard the words of the Bible come out from the leadership here. That's when we started to become new then. Go ahead. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Go ahead. Behold, all things are become new. We have become new. We are to start over. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 5, 12. And we know these scriptures. We go over these scriptures a lot. Go over these scriptures a lot, but I still want to touch on them because they're still relevant every single day. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. ye have need that one teach you again. So just like when we, when we walked in the door, we understood that we had to be taught. We understood we did not know everything. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe people did walk in thinking they knew everything from right off the street. I don't know. I ain't know a goddamn thing. I walked in. You know, you let let uh let Officer Issacar tell you, you know, come in. <laughs> Man, ain't going to tell the story. I'll let him tell it one day. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come in, and we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. But a lot of times we forget that that, is a, that process never ends. We're ever learning. None of us know the whole Bible. But we'll walk around thinking we got everything under wraps like we got everything under control. When no, we don't. That would mean we're not being tried anymore. That would mean we've gotten everything to perfection. Read that verse again. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So we are all here to be taught all over again. We're getting taught again and again and again. Every time my officer... Every time a captain, every time deacon, every time the bishops bring out classes, we are being taught over and over and over again. And a lot of times, brothers and sisters will say, well, I've heard that already. The self-examination goes out the door because they don't want to hear it over and over again. Mind you, we are hard-headed people. We ourselves having wrapped around, wrapped, uh, wrapped our minds around the fact that we still hard-headed sometimes. So we got to be taught these things over and over and over again. So today, we are going to deal with correction, all right, with the way we are to receive it. And if we don't receive it that way, how are we going to struggle? All right, let's go to, let's go to mm, Psalms, Psalms 141, verse 5. Verse 5. Psalms chapter 141, verse 5. Go ahead. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. It said, let the righteous smite me. A lot of times we'll read this scripture and be like, you know, let the righteous smite. It's talking about correct you. It ain't talking about somebody beat the heck out you. That's not, <laughs> that's not what it's saying. But what it is saying is sometimes when you get corrected, it's going to hurt. It's going to feel like somebody smacked you. It's going to feel like somebody punched you in the gut because they get they corrected you and they ain't do so all soft like. So it may hurt. You know, it ain't literally that they sitting up there beating the, beating the brakes off of you. They ain't doing that, but they're going to correct you and they're going to rebuke you. That's what this is talking about, rebuke. Go ahead. It shall be a kindness. Uh-huh. And, and why does and it say it should be a kindness, though? It said it should be a kindness. This is how we should receive the correction. It's supposed to be kind. Even though it hurt, I'm glad they told me because now I can fix it. I ain't going to miss out on the kingdom because they didn't say nothing. But instead, we'll hear that correction. And then instead of us taking it as a kindness, we take it bitterly. We start to formulate these different thoughts where we start to hate the person that corrected us. But go ahead. And let him reprove me. Let him correct me. Go ahead. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. You ain't going to die because somebody yelled at you or corrected you about something you did when you know you was wrong, though. You was wrong. And then, uh, and then because they said it a certain way, everybody think it's disrespectful. 
Mind you, most of us in here played sports. All of us don't went to school and the coach yelled at you. They ain't yelling at you because you did it right. They're yelling at you because you did it wrong. But everybody get right back in there and do it again, over and over again, mess up thousands or hundreds of times, however, at whatever level you was at. And then when they correct you, you will take that with no problem. Or you'll go to school and you get an F on your grade. And then the teacher corrects you and tell you you did it wrong. And then you go back and try to get better grades the next round. Everybody take that correction. You come into the truth and you get corrected. Now all of a sudden, it's off. Now all of a sudden, everybody wrong. Why they corrected me? We forget when it comes to the truth, we don't apply the same principles that we had with people before we walked in here. And it's crazy because this, we would receive the correction from family members. We will receive the correction from any and everybody. And then we come into the truth. Can't nobody tell us nothing. Go ahead. Read that from the top again. Let the righteous smite me. Uh -huh. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Which shall not break my head. Go ahead. For yet my prayer shall shall be in their calamities. So our prayer shall be in their calamities. I right, go to uh let's go to um, Proverbs fifteen ten. Start up for a second. Hold on, Pro let me look at it because I might we might start up. We might start up a little bit. Uh no, we good, right there. Proverbs fifteen ten. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. So correction is grievous unto him that forsakes the way. Remember, it said that all the script, all scripture was given for reproof and correction to make us perfect. And then it says that correction is grievous unto him that forsakes that way. Because you ain't going to get the kingdom. Because you don't want to receive the correction on how to move and how to act, how to keep the commandments in the truth. Go ahead. And he that hateth reproof shall die. That's what the Bible said. It said he that hateth reproof shall die. Hold this spot. Hold this spot. Go to uh, Sirach. Sirach 32 and 17. We're going to come back here. Sirach 32 and 17. Sirach chapter 32 verse 17. Go ahead. A sinful man will not be reproved. It said a sinful man can't be corrected. You will not hear correction. Let's see what they'll do, though. But findeth an excuse. Now, all of a sudden, it's everybody else's fault. It's everybody else's fault why you messed up. Now you're going back and forth with the person that corrected you. That's what they're doing. You're going back and forth with the one that is correcting you all because you don't want to hear what they got to say. When it could have been that everybody else was sitting there, uh, uh, everybody else was sitting there, they saw what the heck you was doing and didn't say nothing to you. And the one person that said something to you, that's the one person you got a problem with. That's the one person you got a problem with is the one that actually said something to you. Matter of fact, go to Proverbs 27. I know what said whole Proverbs 15, right? We're going to go back there. Go to Proverbs 27 and 5. Proverbs 27 and 5. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. Uh -huh. Open rebuke is better than secret so, love. So, the, so the, it said open rebuke is better than secret love because other people could have saw what you was doing wrong and they didn't say a word. They sat up there and was like, man, I, I, I hope bro get that thing together, man. He, I hope he get together. And that's whatever that sin may be that you in or whatever issue you may have. And brothers will sit there or sisters will sit there and say, man, I hope they get it together. But then the one that openly rebuked you, that actually says something, that's the one you got hatred toward. It said their open rebuke is better than the secret love. Read that again. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Let's go back. Go back. Proverbs 15, 10. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Uh -huh. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Go ahead. And he that hateth reproof shall die. He that hateth to be corrected shall die. You're going to feel that hell fire. Go ahead. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. Go ahead. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? Go ahead. A scorner. A scorner. 
a scorner. Let's look up scorner. I I know we didn't say it. I know. Let's look up scorner first real quick. See what it say. It says a person who expresses content or disdain for someone or something. Click that word. Click disdain. Disdain or whatever. Yeah, so the feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect, contempt. So you got disrespect, you got derision, uh, snobbishness. You ever heard somebody say somebody a snob, bro? <laughs> I heard that joke in a minute. Dislike, despite, arrogance, uh, uh. Haughtiness, dismissiveness, like you dismiss a person. Let's read that scripture again. Verse 12 again. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. A person that 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 is un uh, that is that is uh, a snob or that is yes, very disrespectful, that's in derision, that dislike people or dislike the person that's correcting them. It said a, a scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. They'll hate that person that correct them. Go ahead. Neither will he go unto the wise. And then they won't even go get counsel. They won't even go to the wise to get the counsel. And it's funny how the one that is correcting them is better than the ones that saw them doing the evil and didn't say a word. And they won't go to them. They'll hate that person and start formulating these evil thoughts. Not understanding what's really, really going on. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, is that it? Yes, sir. Verse two. Uh, is that it? Let me see. That. Is that it? Uh, jump down to, jump down to, before we leave out of here, 30, 31. 31. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31. Go ahead. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Jump up to, uh, jump up to, read it again. Now we good. Read it again. Yes, sir. The, the ear. That heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. It said the ear that hears correction of life abideth among the wise. You all, you know why you will be around the wise? A lot of times, brothers and sisters will go to people that won't correct them because they don't want to be corrected. Because when you go around those that's been around for a while, uh, like the, the, the leadership, or you have some sisters like the lead sisters, they don't want to talk to them. Because they're going to be the very ones to check them when they go off. But this right here says, The earth that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. They'll be around to be corrected and to hear correction so they can get themselves fixed. Go ahead. Verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But you will have those that don't want to talk to the wise. And they'll run from the correction and it says that you literally it says you what it, it said despise you mean you hate your own self you hate yourself your own soul because you don't care to save it you don't care to save yourself so therefore you despise your own soul go ahead but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding go ahead the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Because that's where you get your wisdom from. It said you will be around the wise. And when you have fear of the Lord, you're going to get that wisdom because you're going to sit amongst those that got it. You're going to counsel with those that got the wisdom. And when they come and correct you, you ain't going to hate them for it. Instead, you're going to actually try to, if, if it's something you don't understand, you'll inquire for them and explain it some more to you. Not that you're going to hate them or go back and forth arguing with them. Instead, you're going to receive the correction and understand, you know what? I have an opportunity to fix it versus if I don't fix it, shoot, my goddamn mind going, uh, like I say, you, you're going to burn. You ain't getting the kink. And that's just what it is. Read on down. And before honor is humility. Because everybody, you, everybody comes in the truth. And you got the men that want to get rank and things like that. You want to move up to where you can do certain works. Because if, if you're not a soldier, you, we all understand you can only do but so much when you're young anyway. You know what I'm saying? Now we got the stewardship program where you can do a lot of work in the body. But a lot of times brothers, brothers want to go 
Brothers want to go out to camp. They want to do those different things, be in the marches and stuff like that, because they're young and they're able to. And they're health-wise, they can do it. But then it says that before honor is humility, though. So before you get to these different levels in the truth, you must have humility to be taught and corrected because ain't nobody, you just ain't going to walk in the door and somebody just give you a lead office. Don't nobody come here and it don't work like that. It never happens like that. Everybody got to come in and humble themselves and say, I don't know a thing. I got to be taught. I got to be corrected on how I must move in this truth before I can ever be a, uh, a, uh, over an office or even in an office. That's why I feel like the first six months, people got to come in and sit down and learn. Because you have to start to correct yourself before you're trusted to even do anything. And even the, the offices that, that, that people consider to be small, they're not small when you read the scripture, but they consider them to be less honorable. Even those offices, you can't do none of those until you've been here for six months. Because you have to start, you have to be corrected in areas before people will trust you with those things. So it's like that across the board for everybody, for everybody. All right. Uh, let's go to. Let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Yeah, Psalms 38. 38. And uh, verse. I think it's verse 18, but let me look at it. Psalms 38. Yes, let's read that. Psalms chapter 38, verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. Mm -hmm. I will be sorry for my sin. And that's how we have to be. It said whenever we get corrected, we can't, we, we have to, it says, for I will declare mine iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Be sorrowful. Be apologetic for what you did. Be remorseful for what you did. But a lot of times we'll get corrected and won't even acknowledge our sin. We'll do something to somebody and won't even acknowledge it. We'll act like we ain't do nothing. We'll act like or somebody will point something out that you're doing that's wrong. Even though you didn't do it to them, they see you doing it and you won't even acknowledge it to save yourself. Read it again. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. I will be sorry for my sin. I right, go to Psalms 32 and 5. Psalms chapter 32 and verse 5. I acknowledge my sin. We did what? He said, what, what did David say? I acknowledge my sin. So we all know when David, what he did when he had slept uh, with his brother wife. Um, and then, of course, killed him also. So this right is in the context of him acknowledging what he did wrong. That's why David was considered perfect. Wasn't because he never did anything wrong. It was because his iniquities was blotted out because he acknowledged his sin and actually fixed them. He didn't do them again. But instead, we won't acknowledge I was to become perfect. Read that again. I acknowledge my sin uh -huh. unto thee. And mine iniquity have I not hid. Say his iniquity have he not hid. Sometimes you have brothers and sisters that are hiding their sins. And they hiding it so much and doing things over and over and over so much that then they be found out. And when they get found out, they still won't acknowledge it. Because you've gotten used to telling yourself the lies that you've told yourself to now you begin to tell everybody else them same false lies. Go ahead. I said, I will confess my transgressions uh -huh. unto the Lord, uh -huh. and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. Because that is what we want. We want the forgiveness of our sins. We don't want our sins to be there. We get, we get up there in front of the Lord getting judged, and now we got a long list of stuff we got to answer for versus it's a sheet that's clean. And Christ's like, no, you straight. Shoot, all your sins blotted out. You acknowledged everything you did wrong. All that we, only, we ain't even finna talk about it. But instead, we would rather sit up there and be on the earth and don't acknowledge our sins toward our, against ourselves that we've done 
Because you have brothers and sisters that's in the midst of fornication, not understanding you're sinning against yourself. Where is that scripture at? That he didn't commit fornication, sin against himself. You know what I'm talking about? Go to, I know they got one in Corinthians. Let's go there. Join himself to a harlot. Yeah, that's it. Six and eighteen. Let's read them. First Corinthians. Yep. First Corinthians chapter six, verse eighteen. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Every sin you do is on your own. Go ahead. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. And you will have brothers and sisters in the midst of that and won't even admit it. You sinning against yourself and won't acknowledge it. You're killing yourself. You doing this against yourself and won't even admit it. Read the next verse. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of, of the Holy Ghost? Go ahead. Which is in you? Because we are supposed to cherish this body that God gave us to borrow. It don't belong to us. We borrowed this body. So whenever we commit fornication, we are defiling the very temple that God gave us. Go ahead. Which ye have of God uh -huh. and ye are not. Your own? Like I said, we ain't our own. This body don't belong to us. Go ahead. For ye are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body uh -huh. and in your spirit, which are God's. They said glorify your body and spirit, which are God's. That's who it belongs to. The body and spirit belongs to God. So whenever we come in and we don't want to be corrected, we're defiling it. Would, how we gonna how we gonna present ourselves back to God spotless when we won't even receive the correction when He either puts somebody in front of us to correct us or whenever we listen to a class and they correct us or whenever we're reading but that might be the problem people ain't reading they're not studying they're not reading unbelievable all right let's go to yeah we already did those uh let's go to Sirach. Sirach 23. No, Hebrews 10, 26. Hebrews 10, 26. No, you're right. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sirach 20 and 3. Sirach 20 and 3. Let's go there. Yeah, Sirach 20 and 3. Sirach chapter 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. How good is it when thou art reproved? It said, how good is it whenever you're corrected? Read that again. How good is it? When thou art reproved. Said, How good is it when we get reproved, when we get corrected? Go ahead. To show repentance. To show repentance. Instead, instead, brothers and sisters sit up there and argue when they're getting corrected. How is that showing repentance then? You you messed up. It's not, it's not the time for you to get an attitude. You messed up. You mad at the person that's correcting you. Now all of a sudden... How do we how do we follow this scripture right here and show repent repentance when we're getting corrected? If whenever the person come correct us, we want to go back and forth and fuss and argue with them. You can't make that stuff up. Read that again. How good is it when thou art reproved uh -huh. to show repentance? Go ahead. For so shalt thou escape willful sin. Because whenever you don't show repentance, now you in the midst of willful sin. Now you in the midst of willful sin because the, the, the correction was brought. They told you what you did wrong, and now you want to get upset. Now you don't want to show forth fruits of repentance. So now you in all manner of willful sin now because you won't acknowledge what you did. You're trying to cover it up as though it's not a big deal. Let's go to Hebrews 10 now. That's the right order that I want to do it in first place my bad <laughs> hebrews 10 hebrews 10 26 yes sir hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin that's how we miss out on the kingdom we we, we didn't receive the correction so now we say there is no more sacrifices for the sins you committed now you got to answer for all of them because you didn't want to accept the correction that was brought to you. Now, when you get up there thinking you good, you ain't good. Now you're getting punished. Jump up to verse 25. 
verse 25. Not forsaking the Matter of fact, go to 24. Yes, sir. Verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Sometimes provoking somebody to good works, you blast them. Sometimes you getting on them, you correcting them about what the heck they doing wrong. Or sometimes it might be you that's getting corrected. It might be me that's getting corrected. Somebody's trying to provoke me to good works. So they ain't sitting up there. They might not say it's off today. Today might not be the day that it's going to come out all, all, all smooth. Today might be the rough day. But they still trying to provoke me to good works. I got to understand and recognize that. Go ahead. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Because said, don't eat. This, this, is, this is why people stop coming around. This is why you won't be around with the wise. You won't go to the wise because it said not forsaking the assembly. The wise is amongst the people. The wise is amongst the assembly. So you know what you will do? Separate yourself. You'll separate yourself. You don't want to be around because you don't want nobody to point out what the heck you doing. Go ahead. As the manner of some is. Uh huh. But exhorting See, one that, another. That exhorting, once again, a lot of times people read that and think it's all, you know, how your mama be at the basketball game. That's my baby. Do a go. No, it ain't always like that. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> it ain't always like that. Sometimes it's, hey, you need to get your ish together, bro. Sometimes it's harsh, but they're still exhorting you. Where you been? Why we ain't seen you in a month, bro? Where the heck you been? We been going to camp for X amount of days and we ain't seen you one time. Why you don't come to camp one on one? Why we don't see you on the Sabbath? You're going to learn today. That's exhorting. Because when they see you, they've been, look, they probably done called you. You ain't answered the phone anyway. But when they see you, the ones that really love you is going to question where you been? What's going on with you? Because they're trying to exhort you to good works. That's why a lot of people that don't congregate or the ones that do the online uh, online prophets, as they say, mm -hmm. they do that because they don't want to be exhorted to good works. They don't want somebody to point out their error because they may feel themselves that I, they, they are beyond correction. And they would rather stay that way. But go ahead, read that again. But exhorting one another in so much, much the more as ye see the day approaching. And that's as we see all of these different droughts, storms, wars, floods, hurricanes, and earthquakes all over the place. In places it ain't happened before. We understand that when we read the Bible that these are signs that it's, it's getting close. It's getting close. And so as we see that, it says we're supposed to want to be around each other, to be exhorted, to be corrected even more. Because we understand it ain't going to be that much longer. But that's how we're supposed to be those that understand what this Bible is saying. But those that don't understand and have that pride on them, they do not understand what we're reading. Matter of fact, let's go. Let's go talk about the pride. Uh, Sirach 10 and 12. Sirach 10 and 12. Sirach, chapter 10, verse 12. Uh -huh. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God. And that's what happens. Whenever, whenever somebody come and reprove you and then you got pride on you where you, wanna, you don't want to accept what's being said, you want to argue with them right there, and, that, and, and then you want to you throw out different stuff just because. Just because your, your feelings may be hurt, you don't want to hear what they're saying. So therefore, that says what again? The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God uh -huh. and his heart is turned away from his maker. And that's what we don't understand. The pride in the Bible is when we start to turn away from God. Because now, because we cannot be corrected, how are we going to ever keep the commandments? How are we going to ever learn to love our neighbor as ourselves? How are we ever going to learn how to love God with all our heart? How we going to do that when we won't even when, when we got pride on us that when the correction is sent to help us learn how to do that, all of a sudden we don't want it. We don't want it. So therefore, we turn away from God. Go ahead. For pride is the beginning of sin. That's 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 what happens. Pride is the beginning of sin because now you know it all and can't nobody say nothing to you. 
Go ahead. And he that hath it shall, shall pour out abomination. And that's what happens. Now you got uh, backbiting going on. You got hatred going on. You got murmuring going on. You got lying going on. All the abominations start to pour out. All because when somebody tried to correct you, you didn't think that their correction was good enough for you. You thought you knew better. Sometimes brothers and sisters that go go see brothers and sisters like like you know what I'm saying they'll see them not doing something that they should be doing and they'll go to them hey listen I know you you at this point in time in your life X Y Z boom 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 take these steps help yourself provide for your family do these things to sisters that go to another sister and say look to be a, a help me to your husband or to prepare for the husband that you got or that you're proven. Or that you're looking to get laid on down the line, you don't want to carry yourself this way because ain't no brother going to want to prove you why you acting like this. And the sisters and them will get mad. And the brother will get mad when the brother that's trying to instruct them has already taken those steps. He can tell them how to do it. He don't want to accept it. He'll let pride sit in and act like he ain't talking to him. Or she'll let pride sit in and act like that woman ain't talking to him. And then they find themselves in all manner of abomination after that because now you have all the different things that come with that. You didn't want to listen. You had pride. So now, like the scriptures say, you didn't follow counsel. Now you're in poverty. You can't provide. Now you can't execute. So then you start to lie because the person that told you already, you don't, you didn't hear them. So now you try to cover your sins. And because you're covering it, it gets worse and worse and worse for you until you be honest with yourself. Read that again. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Go ahead. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities uh -huh. and overthrew them Utterly. And, over, and overthrew them utterly. So just like before, we can face that very same thing if we have pride when correction comes. Let's go to uh, let's go to Sirach 20. And, do we already read Sirach 23, right? We already yes. did that, right? Yes, sir. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 13. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. Uh -huh. But evil men and seduces. So evil men. Because it's evil when it said pride is the beginning of sin. You become evil now. Now you're spewing out abominations. You're spewing out abominations. Go ahead. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. It said you're going to get worse and worse. Go ahead. Deceiving and being deceived. You're going to be you're deceiving others by continuing to lie and cover your sin because you won't acknowledge it. You're getting worse and worse. And then you wonder why the things that's going on with you or the correction is constantly coming to you about the exact same thing over and over again. You'll, you'll, you'll wonder why sisters will come to you and correct you about the same thing over and over and over again. Because you're obviously getting worse and worse, but now you've become a hardhead. You don't want to listen. You don't want to listen, so now you have pride. And pride is sit in, and now you're full of abominations. Now you're full of hatred toward those that are correcting you. To where you slowly but surely walk yourself out the door. And that's not how we're supposed to be. Because we're supposed to understand that that correction is to make us perfect. That correction is to make us perfect. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. We already did Psalms 38 and 18, right? Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 7 and 10. 
time we got. Yeah, we almost done. Second Corinthians seven what? Uh, Second Corinthians chapter seven verse ten. Yes, sir. Second Corinthians chapter seven verse ten. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. It said godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Let's go to Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 and 6. We're going to read a good bit of this chapter because this is pretty much what most, what most of the class is really based off of. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Go ahead. For... For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. So whoever God loves, he corrects. Chasteneth, he corrects us. So if he loves us, he's going to correct us. So when people stop dealing with you and stop correcting you, then you should be worried because don't nobody want to fool with you. Don't nobody want to fool with you. Now you should be worried. Well, you ain't, ain't nothing going on. You, you, just, you just out there on your own. Go ahead. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And scourge. What does scourgeth mean? Let's put that up there. I know we just gonna, gonna go with the with the with the thing. Rock with me. I know I didn't. No, I ain't asked for it. Hmm. Let's read. No, no. Shoot. Read. Read. I like read one. Yes, sir. Scourge. A whip used as an instrument of punishment. Now remember, ain't that what? Ain't that what the Most High created Esau to do to us? Yes, sir. Because we was jacked up and didn't want to do what God said, he literally created a whole race of people to jack us up, to whip us back into shape. But let's see what the set number two say. Number two, a person or thing that causes great trouble or suffering. So God will cause us to be in suffering and he will cause us trouble What's the, what's, the, what's the similar words? Affliction. Uh-huh. Curse. Plague. Shoot, ain't that what Deuteronomy 28 is all about? So that we get fixed, so that we will repent and say, matter of fact, let, let's go to Hosea. Hosea 5.15. We all know Deuteronomy 28. We go through Deuteronomy 28 a lot, but let's see why this happened. What in the world are we supposed to do? Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place. So God went and returned his place. Go ahead. Till they acknowledge their offense. Because we didn't acknowledge when we was getting afflicted before. He was correcting us. We done been through many captivities getting corrected. And we didn't listen. So he said, you don't want to listen? Cool. Cool. I'm, I'm going to go back. Let, every, let any and everybody do what they want until you acknowledge what the heck you did. And that's why we all sitting up prayers now, apologizing to God, asking for forgiveness, asking for mercy, because we understand what we really did. But then we forget that when it's between brother and brother and sister and sister and sisters and brothers. Now we've, we've, we think we've made it already. Read that verse, read the rest of it. And seek my face. And we got to seek God's face in the Bible. We got to learn what he wants us to do. We have to learn the correction. We have to learn the laws that are going to fix us. And then we have to accept what we're doing wrong and then actually do what he's telling us to do to make it right. Go ahead. In their affliction, they will seek me early. And that's what we'll do. In our affliction, we will seek God early. So let's go back to, to scourge again. Let's go back to scourge again. Is that right? Is that where we was at, right? No, scroll up a little bit. Yeah, scroll up. I want the, uh, yeah, right here. The similar words, some more of them. We got uh, burden. E yeah, evil, burden, trial. So God will put us through a trial? Penalty. He'll, he'll, he'll pen you know, put us, penalty, penalize us, put us through punishment, visitation. You know how the scriptures work? Most of us say, I'm a visit. I will visit your sins. Thorn in one's flesh, side, cross to burr. That's what scourge is. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's read it again. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So he going to put all of us through a trial. And those of us that haven't, if you haven't seen the three trials of faith, you should go look at it. 
because those three trials of faith is congregational marriage and uh and internal yourself so the congregational ones that you will have that was right right why y'all say why y'all say i was right right personal internal right <laughs> personal that's how i is i man well the actual word that was said in the class was personal when I say internal, internal, I mean in your, your own mind. No, not that. That is not the right. The well, hell is this? IT don't went off now. Oh, I, IT yeah. don't went off now. So make sure if you haven't seen that class by Bishop, you need to go and watch that class. So there's going to be trials that you have personally. There's going to be trials that you have in the congregation amongst your brothers and sisters. And there's also going to be trials that you're going to have in your marriage if you're married. So if you're not going through any of these trials, hey, most I might not might not be dealing with you. Verse seven, because remember, it said you will go through these things so that you can be corrected on how to do them right. So you can fix them. Go ahead. Verse seven. If ye endure chastity. So we got to endure, endure the trial, endure the correction. Go ahead. God dealeth with you as with sons. And that's what we all want to be. We all want to be called the sons of God. We've all been allowed to repent and to come back into the adoption. That's right. But in order to do that, we got to go through the correction, the correction that God put us through. You think it's, you think it's by a, a, a coincidence that God put men on the earth to correct us? Every time we read in the scriptures, when you read all through Judges, when you read all through, through, through the, New Te the Old Testament, he always sent prophets to go and correct us. And then when they correct us, when we repent, God go to go to work. He send the angels to do the work. And that's what we want him to do again for us. So whenever we it's people around us that are here to correct us, we must receive the correction and understand that God is trying to deal with us. Go ahead. For what son is he whom the father chasteth not? Go ahead. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof? All are partakers. So it said, we're of all are partakers because we all going to get chastised. Go ahead. Then are ye bastards and not sons. So if ain't nobody coming to you telling you you doing nothing. Most high ain't putting you through nothing, correcting you, putting people around you to correct you. Most high might not be dealing with you. Be afraid. Because this right here is what people do. That's why the people that stay stay at home or they'll stay online because they don't want to deal with that correction that comes with being around God's people. Read on. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which are, which corrected us. All of us had parents that corrected us. Go ahead. And we gave them reverence. Go ahead. Shall we not much rather in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? So whenever we get corrected according to the scriptures, shouldn't we reverence that more than what our fathers and mothers did in the world. We should reverence. We should be thankful. Of that correction. Because that correction is going to get us into the kingdom of heaven. Go That's ahead. That's right. For they verily for a few days. Chastened us. After their own pleasure. But he for our profit. That we might be partakers of his holiness. So whenever we are corrected by our brothers and sisters according to the scripture, it is for our profit. It's not to kill you. It's to save your life. But then we'll turn around and, and hate brothers and sisters because of that correction. When the most I set that brother or sister there. To actually help us. What happened? What happened, IT? Hold on, y'all. We'll be back. We, I can't keep going. Nigga. Bear with us, y'all. They fixing the camera.
All praises. We back. <laughs> All right. Where was we at? Uh, verse 10, sir. Read verse 9. Yes, sir. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. So we gave our fathers of the world, our mother, our parents of the world, reverence when they corrected us with a beating or whatnot, a punishment. Go ahead. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? It said, but we should be more in subjection to God's correction. Because his correction is going to make us live. Go ahead. For they verily for a few days chasten us uh -huh. after their own pleasure. Go ahead. But he for but God. But he for our pleasure. For, for our, our profit, profit. It's good for us that we'll live forever. That's that's how profitable the correction of God is. It is going to help us. It is going to make us live forever if we receive his correction. Go ahead. That we might be partakers of his holiness. And that's the holiness that is talking about, the kingdom. Go ahead. Now, no chastening for the for the present seemeth to be joyous. So all, whenever correction comes, though, it don't always feel good. It don't always. It didn't. Shoot, ask our foremothers and forefathers. It don't feel it didn't feel good for them to go through slavery. Even for us, shoot, it don't feel good for us to go to work. Because we understand who we are now. So why the heck do we got to allow peasants to tell us to go to work? We allow people that are beneath us to tell us when to come to work, what time, what to wear, what we got to do, when we get a break. Boy, ain't no way, boy. All of that. But we'll sit up there and act like we not going to do what God said to get out of it, though. All of those things were set up and all these things have been set up for our correction because we did not want to do what God said. Then we didn't want to love each other like God said. We was worried each other in the Bible. When you read out, we was fighting with each other. Then we was going off serving other gods. All of those things. And even today, when somebody come and correct you to try to save your life, you will serve your God darn self. Now, all of a sudden, you know better than all the counselors that told you the same thing, all the sisters that told you the same thing, all the brothers that told you the same thing. You know better than all of them when they've been around and doing this thing for a while and they trying to help you get it right. And you nah, I can't stand them. Correction don't always feel good. It don't always feel good. Read that from the top again. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. It ain't joyous when you get it. You ain't jumping up and down for joy when you get corrected. Go ahead. But grievous. But it's grievous. Go ahead. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It said, but after that correction comes. And this is talking about the wise. When that correction comes, then it's going to afterwards bring the fruit of righteousness because they're going to receive that correction. And then you're going to start to see that person change for the better. They'll become a better leader. They'll become better fathers. They'll become better mothers, better sisters and brothers to each other. They'll then begin to bring forth the fruit of righteousness. Go ahead. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. It said, lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. You know how when you know how whenever you correct a brother or sister and then they walk around like they just so sad and freaking pitiful. They like, yeah, screw. Correct me, man. Oh. God said, hold your gat darn head up. You took the correction, all praises. Move on, fix it, and move on. But That's what happens? Right. What happens is let's go to second. I think it's second Ezra sixteen. Is that it? Second Ezra sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, second Ezra sixteen. Yeah, seven seventy six. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter sixteen, verse seventy six. Yep. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Saith the Lord God, uh -huh. let not your sins weigh you down. That's saying the same thing he's saying in Hebrews. Don't allow your sins to weigh you down. When you get corrected, move on. 
Don't stay wallowing in your sin. The woe is me spirit. Go ahead. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Go ahead. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Those are the ones that's hanging their head. They can't get out of their own way. They can't receive the correction. So they in their own way. Go ahead. With their sins and covered with their iniquities. Uh-huh. Like as a field is covered over with bushes. No one can get through to you. You you are covered around all kinds of bushes and thorns. Can't nobody get through to you. Woe be unto you. Go ahead. And the path thereof covered with thorns. Go ahead. That no man may travel through. That no man may travel through. Go ahead. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. That's That's where you miss out on the kingdom right there. Because you've you've covered yourself in your sins and you won't move on and you want to hang on to it. You want to hold a grudge when somebody come and deal with you. You want to get mad. You want to get the war with me spirit. God says, get out of your own way. Go back to Hebrews and read that verse again. Hebrews. Verse, uh, uh, what was it? 12. Verse, yes, sir. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Uh-huh. Wherefore, lift up the hands which which hang down. And the feeble knees. So get, so hold your head up. That's the whole reason why Christ came. That's the whole reason is so that we can learn to be perfect. Matter of fact, hold that. Let's go to Titus 2. Titus 2 and 11. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto I'm sorry, hath appeared to all men. So it's appeared unto us. So the grace of God has appeared to us. Go ahead. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. It it teaches us to deny ungodliness. So we're being taught not to sin. That's why we're getting corrected. We're being taught not to sin. So what are we hanging our heads for when we learn not to sin? We become more and more perfect. We get closer and closer to closer to getting the kingdom. Read it again. Teaching us that denying ungodliness in worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And that's what we're being taught. Through the correction of the Bible, we're being taught how to keep the commandments. And that grace is there because it takes us time to learn it. We to make haste when we learn it. But it gives us time to learn it. And as we learn it, we make haste to execute. So what are we hanging our heads for whenever we get corrected? Stand, stand in that low spirit. Now it says it is going to be grievous. So at the beginning, you're going to be hurt. It's going to feel like somebody punched you in the gut. It's going to hurt your chest. But once you done thought about it, you're supposed to then bring forth fruit of righteousness. Now you're supposed to jump back on the horse. Now you're supposed to keep riding. Now you're supposed to seek the Lord 10 times harder because now you know how to do it better. Go ahead. Verse 13 now. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope. No, no, hope. no, no. Hebrews 12 and 13. Oh, my bad. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, mm-hmm. lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. So it said, make straight fat, uh, paths for your feet, lest that which is lame Meaning like you hurt, be turned out of the way. But read the last part. But let it rather be healed. So don't stay hurt. Don't stay hurt. You know how whenever you you, you get, uh, you know, like brothers be at work and they might hurt their back or whatever. They hurt your back or whatever for a little bit of time. You know what I'm saying? So it, it says for you to get healed. Or whenever you an athlete and you get injured and you sit on the sideline for a little while and then you bounce back. And you keep it moving. You try to come back way better than what you was when you was hurt. That's how we supposed to be. Because sometimes in the truth, you may get demoted. You may have to sit down. Sometimes it may get to the point where you might do something and get put out the body for a little while. But when those things happen, when you get set down, you're supposed to be examining yourself. You're supposed to be going through the correction that was given that the leadership gave. And then as they give that correction and you're reviewing and you're self-examining yourself and you're like, you know what? I messed up right here, right here. They was right. I was wrong. I was off. Let me not do that no more. And then when you're given that chance to get back in the game, you get back in the game. 
You don't sit over there and be like, man, I can't do nothing. It said, let it be healed. Move on. Go ahead. Let's read on down. Verse 14. Verse 14. Follow peace with all men. Because, and it's telling you to follow peace because sometimes that correction will cause brothers to hate the brother or sister that corrected them. So it said, be at peace with all men. Go ahead. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So without which no man shall see the Lord. So if you start to hold a grudge against a brother or sister that corrects you, how are you going to get the kingdom? When the scriptures say don't hold a grudge, don't have no hatred. But because you won't receive the correction because you're a scorner or because you're rebellious, you're full of pride, got all kinds of abomination going on, it says you ain't going to see the Lord. Go ahead. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Because like it said, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Because that grace was to teach us to not sin in this present world. And because we want to hold a grudge instead of taking the correction, we can't fix it. We getting worse and worse and worse because we won't take the correction so that grace that we was given we took advantage of it and did not do what we were supposed to do with it now we got to pay read on lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you mm -hmm. and thereby many be defiled it said many would fall to that because many fall into bitterness when they're corrected they begin to hate the people that correct them uh, read on. we did second Corinthians 7 and 10 yes, sir. we did all oh, praise let's go to psalms 51 17 Psalms 51, 17. Psalms chapter 51, verse 17. Hold on, let me see. Let me look at it. Psalms 51. Forgive me. Slow. All right, here we go. Yeah, read that. Psalms chapter 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God. Thou wilt not despise. And that's the kind of heart we're supposed to have, a contrite heart, a remorseful heart. That's what contrite means. We're supposed to be remorseful, sorrowful, unto repentance, though. Not hanging our head, not walking around and not changing what in the world we're doing wrong. We are to fix it. That's what we're supposed to do whenever we are being corrected. All right, let's go to... Did we do Psalms 9 and 8 yet? I don't no, think sir. we did. Let's do Psalms. Uh, no, Proverbs 9 and 8. Proverbs 9 and 8. We're almost done. We're almost done. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Reprove, I'm sorry, reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. It said reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Go ahead. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he'll love you. That's how we're supposed to be. Whenever we get corrected, we're supposed to love that person that did it. Not the top where we don't worry, can't nobody deal with us. It says we should rebuke a wise man and he will love you because that man understands that you're trying to save that life. That man understands that that correction is how he or she is going to get the kingdom of heaven. But whenever we cannot be corrected, will be destroyed just like Esau ain't gonna be he can't he, he ain't got no promise no nothing to come to him and God said we'll mess around and lose out on our inheritance because we don't want to receive instruction or correction all right let's go to verse uh, Proverbs 8 and 13 we'll leave it right there Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And we have to hate evil. To fear God, we must hate evil. And it is evil to be prideful when you get corrected. It is evil. Go ahead. Pride and arrogancy. Pride and arrogancy. Go ahead. In the evil way, in the forward mouth, do I hate. So the same way that David, that, uh, that, uh, that Solomon hate, hated Pride and arrogancy in an evil way, evil, a forward mouth. Do I hate? We supposed to hate that. So if we hate it, we ain't supposed to be moving like that. 
So if we're going to hate evil, if we're going to hate pride, we ourselves have to examine ourselves and make sure we're not caught up in it. Let's go to that. Let's go to uh, examine yourself. And then Hebrews 2. Second Corinthians. Sir. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Yes, sir. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. We must examine ourselves. So whenever we're being corrected, we must examine ourselves. We, for one, we must be examining ourselves every day, daily, on a daily basis. And, and furthermore, whenever someone is correcting us, we should be examining ourselves instead of trying to make an excuse as to why we act in the way we act in or to go back and forth with the person. Go ahead. Prove your own self. Prove your own self. Only you can you go ahead. Matter of fact, it's going to say it. Know ye not your own self. You know you. We don't know you. You know you. You know what you're dealing with. You know if you're prideful. You know if you don't take correction well. You know what you got to work on. Go ahead. How that Jesus Christ is in you, uh -huh. except ye be reprobates. We don't want to be reprobates. So we have to examine ourselves to make sure that we're following the correction that is given, whether it's coming from God and he's dealing with us personally, or whether it's coming from a brother and sister, whether it's, you know, any of those things. We have to examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith. I'm sorry, Sirach 2. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sirach 2. I said I was almost done, Sirach 2. Let me read this thing, uh, two, and, 2 and 1. Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Because you're going to be tried. So when those different trials come, prepare yourself. That's what we're supposed to be doing, getting prepared. So when it comes, when that correction comes, we can recognize that person love me. A lot of times when brothers or sisters are emotional and can't understand that that person is, is really showing you the true love that we need or that you need, it's because you ain't studying the Bible. You have not prepared yourself for that correction to come. Go ahead. Verse 2. Set thy heart aright uh -huh. and constantly endure uh -huh. and make not haste in, in time of trouble. So the time of trouble may be when you get corrected. Don't run. Take the correction. Don't start making excuses. Don't start throwing everybody and anybody else out there or, or under the bus or trying to just throw things out there to make yourself feel good. You know, you will see something. You will see brothers and sisters, they'll get corrected, and then they start throwing out everybody else's evil that they've seen for a year or two. And it's like, well, why you ain't tell them this before you got corrected? You know, some some wives, some some husbands and wives do that. The husband will say something to the wife, and then the wife will then, then turn around and say, well, you was doing this years ago. You the one getting corrected today, and you talking about something years ago. All because the you ain't want to take that correction. <laughs> the hell you want to take the correction. You want to take the rebuke from your husband. So now you got a problem. You've been doing this. You was doing that. Come read on, man. Again. Let's read, read the verse again. Verse two. <laughs> Set thy heart aright and constantly endure uh -huh. and make not haste in time of trouble. Go ahead. Cleave unto him and depart not away. So cleave unto the Lord and depart not away. How do you do that? Examine yourself. Take the correction. Take it the way we're supposed to take it. Cheerfully. Go ahead. That, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And thou mayest be increased in thy last end. Go ahead. Verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. So whatever correction comes, whatever trial comes. Take cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. Go ahead. And be patient. When thou art changed to a low of state. Because you may be changed to a low state. You may be put out the body for a while. You may be demoted. We may have a, hey, we've been demoted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We get demoted and things like that. And then we start thinking about, man, people ain't going to look at us the same and stuff like that. When actually, when you bounce back, it's better. Because now you're showing people the example as to how they got to do it. A lot of times brothers will get demoted and things like that, and we'll start to look at the brothers around us and say they're treating us different. And that's just side note, side note. Especially in, in, in young congregation, a couple of years where the congregation only been there for a couple of years, and then one brother will get demoted, and then everybody treat that brother different, and that one brother will take offense to it. 
But a lot of times he's not understanding that that same correction he got, everybody around him got to learn how to apply Ephesians with him. Is it Ephesians 6 and 1? Or is it Galatians 6 and 1? Galatians 6 and 1. A lot of times brothers got to be taught. How, we, gotta, we all got to be taught how to do that. It's just a side note. Because sometimes brothers lose, lose their rank and brothers will treat them different because they're young. They don't really know how to apply that script. And a lot of times brothers put in that position or that's the example, they forget that even the brothers around them got to grow too. So it's just a side note there. Let's go to he uh, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. 2 and 1. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So as Lord's will, something was said that uh that was edifying that, that you may be able to grow. And that's for all of us. That's even for me too. This class is edifying for me as I was working through it. Go ahead. Lest at any time we should let them slip. So we must take these things, take heed to what the scriptures say. So when correction comes, it ain't going to feel good at first, but we then must examine what's being said and examine ourselves so that we do not, and make sure we're not holding grudges against each other so that we don't miss out on the kingdom. All right, brothers and sisters, so Lord's will, everybody got something from the class. So with that, say shalom, most high, and Christ bless. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 